Hi there, welcome to the second part of COVID vaccine in autoimmune disease as well as patients on immune suppressive medications. My name is Rohit Agarwal, I'm a rheumatologist and I'm an associate professor of medicine at University of Pittsburgh. Before you see this part, please view part one of the series in which I discuss vaccines overall effectiveness as well as safety data. To start with, I want to make three points clear. First, patients with autoimmune conditions and patients on immune suppressive drugs were generally excluded from all of these vaccine trials. In fact, there's nothing wrong in this approach. Most vaccine trials and other trials are done like that. Moreover, it does not mean that these vaccines are not safe in autoimmune conditions as well as patients on immune suppressive drugs. In fact, most vaccines, except the live vaccines are safe in patients with autoimmune disease and immune suppressive condition and we have no reason to believe that this vaccine will be any different. Second point, more data will be available on patients with autoimmune disease and immune suppressive condition as these trials goes into phase 4 or post-marketing surveillance which is an appropriate place to evaluate autoimmune disease and immune suppressed conditions. Third point, to take or not take the vaccine is individual patient decision, which should be taken after weighing, weighing all the risk and the benefit and based on the discussion with your doctor. Now let's go to question number one. The most common question that I'm getting is, is vaccine effective in patients with autoimmune disease and immune suppressive conditions? What we know from the data is that the vaccine was highly effective even in patients with diabetes and other comorbid condition as well as elderly patients, patients above age of 65 as well as patients above age of 75. Now these patients, patients with diabetes, comorbid conditions and uh, patients who are um, you know 60 or 70 years old are somewhat have compromised immune system to some extent. So if you extrapolate that result to our immunocompromised patients, you would say perhaps the vaccine would be effective in this population as well. Now, we do know that our immune suppressed patients generally mount less strong response to any vaccine. Now, in most cases, this less strong response is significant enough or sufficient enough to protect even those patients from serious viral and other illnesses. Lastly, from the experience of previous vaccine development, we know that generally the vaccines are effective in patients with autoimmune conditions as well as patients with immune suppressed medications. Another very important question I'm getting is, is COVID vaccine safe in patients with autoimmune conditions and immune suppressed medications? Typically, we do not recommend live vaccines in patients with immune suppressed condition. However, fortunately, none of the late stage vaccine currently in development in US our live vaccine. So we don't have any infection risk from these COVID-19 vaccines even in our immune suppressed patients. We also know that these vaccines were very safe even in patients with diabetes, other comorbid conditions including lung problems as well as elderly patient population, patients above 65 or 75 years of age. There is no theoretical safety risk in patients with autoimmune conditions or patients on immune suppressive medications from these COVID vaccines as compared to any other vaccines previously developed. So overall, in my knowledge, there is no major safety concerns of this COVID-19 vaccine. Granted, we only have an average data for two to three months and the maximum amount of data has been six months. Now let's come to third question. Should patient receiving COVID-19 vaccine hold their immune suppression before or after getting COVID-19 vaccine. Now we know from flu and other vaccine that effectiveness of the vaccine is better if we hold immune suppression for a few weeks, perhaps two weeks. And although we don't have any specific data for COVID-19 vaccine, but the same logic could be applied for COVID-19 vaccine. On the other hand, there is risk of holding immune suppression. They can increase risk of flare-up or worsening of the disease. Moreover, we do know that even when patients on immune suppressive medication get vaccines such as flu vaccines, they are generally protected against the virus, although may not be of that level or may not protect everybody. Therefore, I believe 
to the decision of holding immune suppression or what medication to hold and how long to hold should be taken by patients after discussing with their doctors and considering all the risk and benefit involved. Now we do know that there are certain medications that should be avoided prior to the vaccine. These are patients who are receiving rituximab or IV steroid or high doses of steroid. And we have certain medications which could be taken safely while receiving vaccines. For example, IVIG or hydroxychloroquine may not affect the vaccine response at all. Let's come to fourth question. Is there greater risk or side effects of this vaccine in patients with autoimmune condition or patients with ongoing arthritis or myositis? Although we don't have specific data on patients with autoimmune conditions, we know that generally COVID-19 vaccine is very safe. It has been studied on tens of thousands of patients. It does have some common side effect which is seen in any vaccine. For example, injection site reaction with pain and swelling, which generally results in few days, as well as patients can develop fever, muscle pain, joint pain, chills, headache, uh, fatigue, nausea. These are common side effects and generally go away within few days. In fact, taking a Tylenol post vaccine might help mitigate even these side effects. Fifth question, will patients with autoimmune condition get priority to get these vaccines? Regulatory bodies are developing a whole framework to decide the priority for these vaccines and it's generally divided into four phases. Here are four phases in which vaccines will be given as per the priority. First is phase one. This includes healthcare workers, patients who are elderly above 65 years of age and patients who have comorbid and other underlying conditions which put them at significantly higher risk. Although I'm not certain, but I believe patients with autoimmune condition, especially those who are on immune suppressive medications should be considered in phase one as they are high risk to develop COVID-19 infection. Next question, were there any shortcuts taken in the development of the vaccine that may compromise the safety of the vaccine in general? The short answer is no. Vaccine development is a highly organized and monitored process. There are several regulatory bodies that monitor the clinical trial data um, for safety throughout the trial. Moreover, FDA reviews all the data themselves before giving any approval. And in this case, for COVID-19, CDC has put an extra surveillance process. Basically, given the severity and the extent of the pandemic, everybody made this a priority and allocated their time, manpower and other resources into the development of the vaccine, including the regulatory body, government agencies and all pharma. Also, COVID vaccine trials were one of the largest vaccine trial ever done. So basically, the fast vaccine development is a testament of our scientific community and as per my understanding, all steps were religiously followed. Seventh question, how much and how long will this COVID vaccine protect us from COVID infection? Now, how much? Well, Pfizer vaccine we know is 95% effective against COVID-19 infection. That's a rock star performance for any vaccine ever developed. However, Durability of the response or how long will the vaccine work is a little difficult question. We know that there were patients who were protected up to six months in the clinical trial and on an average, these patients were followed for about two to three months. So we certainly hope this vaccine works at least a year or perhaps even more, but we don't know that yet. It is also possible that the vaccine can give us long lasting immunity, but we still have to see the data on that. Next question. Do I take the vaccine if I have previously recovered from COVID infection? Generally, yes, you should take the vaccine even if you have had the infection in past. The reason is that we don't know the antibodies that you've developed after the COVID infection are neutralizing antibodies or not and how long will they last in your body or not. Next, how much will be the cost of the vaccine to me as a patient? Well, there should be no cost to you because vaccine is free in US and several other countries around the world. However, there may be some administrative fee or some um, uh, small amount of fee that the patient may have to pay, which in most cases should be covered by the insurance. Last question. 
If I take the vaccine, does that mean that I can stop taking precautions and go about my life as usual as pre-COVID? No, you should still continue to take precautions because it, you need 70% of the population to develop immunity to the virus either by vaccine or by infection for us to stop taking precautions and prevent the spread of the infection or the virus. So till then, we should continue to wear masks, perform social distancing and other general measures that we are currently taking. Do I recommend vaccine in my autoimmune disease patients or patients who are on immune suppressive medications? Absolutely yes, because the benefits of the vaccine to individual patients as well as society at large significantly outweighs some unknown long-term risk. In general, the vaccine has been proven to be very safe on tens and thousands of patients. So my last take or advice for you is go ahead, take the vaccine after discussing with your doctor. That's all from me. Thank you very much for listening. And if you find this video useful, please subscribe to the channel.